Hello, today we'll be discussing about clinical examination of the ear. This is useful for both MBBS and MS ENT students. To start with the examination of ear, we examine the pinna and its surrounding areas, external artery canal, tympanic membrane, middle ear. The clinical test of hearing and balance are also examined. Station tube function test is carried out and facial nerve and other kind of examination is also performed. So to start with the pinna and its surrounding areas. First, we have to inspect the pinna for its size, shape, position and color. Then we have to see for vesicles, scars and ulcers in the pinna. So both lateral as well as the medial respect of the pinna are to be looked for. Then pre area has to be seen for sinus, swelling, scar and fistula. Then post area itself also has to be seen for starts of the post group, sinus, swelling, scar and fistula. So then palpation is to be carried out for local temperature first, tenderness of the pinna, thickness of tissues. The tenderness of the pinna is usually carried out by circumduction test where the, the pinna is just rotated and seen if there is tenderness. Then tragal tenderness, just try, press the tragus towards the external artery canal, give posterior aspect and look for pain. When the, when the patient has pain, then the patient will just form some form of uh, pain sensation. And tenderness are the simbakunki are to be examined. So tenderness of the simbakunki is the suggestive of mastoid tenderness, okay, in, especially in children when the mastoid tip is not well developed. Mastoid tenderness is usually performed at three points one at the mastoid tip, then one at the simbakunki, and next at the between the simbakunki and the tip, usually at the mastoid cord exposteriorly. Now, after examination of the external aspect, you have to go to examination of the external canal, which is performed first without speculum and then with the speculum. The advantage of without speculum examination is just to find out the caliber of the external meatus and to just uh, know uh, when the patient has frankel or when there is pain. So, if you pass the speculum when the patient has been uh, frankel, then it will be painful for the patient. So, the pinna is pulled upwards backwards and laterally and tragus is pulled forward so the canal can be widened. You have to see for the caliber of the meatus just to find out the speculum, the size of its speculum that can be easily passed to see contents of the lumen including wax, might be discharge, might be foreign body, might be debris, might be wax, everything. Then you can see swelling of the the cartilaginous external the canal. Then with the speculum, you have to use the largest speculum that can be snugly fitted in the external the canal to see for keratosis debris, polyps, granulous tissues, exostrosis or osteoma in the inner, the medial part, then other growths, sagging of the posterior superior canal wall which is usually seen in acute mastoiditis uh, which is due to the inflammation or periosteitis of the floor of the mastoidentum or sometimes can be seen, you can see ballooning which is found in the keratosis of transiculi or narrowing of the bony external canal as you can see by osteosis, osteoma, exostrosis like that, inflammatory conditions. The, this is the speculum and the patient is being tested with the speculum here. Then examination of tympanic membrane has to be carried out after that by suppose with the examination of the speculum you can see the tympanic membrane but sometimes you have to can see with the, with the otoscope also. You have to see for color. Normally the color of tympanic membrane is partly white to gray. The, sometimes it can be red and congested, bluish or soggy plaque when there is tympanosclerotic patch. The position might be either retracted or bulging, normal position being the common, but sometimes retraction is also uh, found in many other conditions. But when there is retraction, then mention the quadrants and different grades of retraction. You know, there are four different grades of retraction of pars tensa as well as pars placida. Surface, you can have to see for vesicles or bulla in the tympanic membrane. Then if there is perforation, either perforation might happen in AOM or might happen in chronic arthritis media. Then you have to see for the mobility of tympanic membrane. The either normal mobility or its restricted uh, mobility in certain quadrants. You have to just uh, signify, you have to just quantify the quadrants also uh, in which the uh, retraction is, uh, restriction of movement is there. The fistula test can be carried out during this time, but we can do later on also. But as we are looking for mobility of tympanic membrane, you can perform fistula test there, then and there, and you can test the results later on. Now, coming to examination of middle ear and the mastoid. 
so middleware usually cannot be examined directly but when there is proliferation of timpani membrane then you can see the condition of middleware mucosa and if there is any growth of squamous epithelium then you can see that metaplasia or squamous in growth of squamous epithelium uh, the status of ossicles if they can be visualized usually when there is perforation and you can see the incus and sometimes even the stapes can be visualized if the there is ossicular discontinuation you can see ossicular discontinuity also or uh, examination of mastoid as already explained in on inspection you have to look for any swelling or abscess in large nodes obliterate some sectoral group in furuncle or in acute mastoiditis then fistula burst abscess or scar due to previous surgery usually post surgical approach then palpation you have to palpate the surface which is usually irregular the the mastoid and sometimes when it is small smooth ironed out or you can see due to periosteal inflammation and acute mastoiditis there will be smooth iron out fill and there will be thinness of the mastoid uh, you have to do in three finger tests like over the simba conchi over the mastoid tip and between the simba conchi and mastoid tip in the mastoid cortex now we'll come to the examination of uh, clinical test of hearing till now suppose till this uh, slide then you have to examine both the sides suppose if you start on right then you do on the left but on since it's clinical test of hearing or auditory function you have to do on both the sides tuning fork tests tuning fork tests are performed with tuning forks of all three frequencies 256 512 and 1024 hertz frequencies they have still significant then rini test weber test and abc test are commonly performed sometimes sawback test which is uh, the modification of abc test itself the tuning fork test for non organic hearing hearing loss sometimes can be asked in the exam like stinger test and sima mimus test at least you have to be able to explain in the examination otherwise rini weber abc or sawback test are the common test performed so suppose as i already told there are three tuning forks can be used and these tuning forks have different frequencies this 1024 512 and 256 so rini negative with different frequency tuning forks shows different levels of hearing like when it's negative on 256 hertz but positive on 512 hertz the hearing will be between 15 and 20 this for hearing loss when it's negative on 512 hertz then 31 to 45 and when it's negative in all the frequency all the tuning fork tuning forks that will be 46 to 60 this for hearing loss okay so uh, at least the patient will have Uh, at least you will have some idea regarding the patient's hearing by different tuning forks now coming to clinical test of balance especially vestibular function test you should be able to uh, find out patient's vestibular problem when the patient enters inside the office inside the examination room itself by looking at the gate when the gate is uh, imbalanced then you have to at least find out the condition that there is some form of imbalance then patient has to be seen for spontaneous nystagmus then rumbach test then antrobach test and fistula test also can be carried out later on uh fistula test can be carried out in different uh, different techniques like rapidly pressing the tragus against the external canal or by the help of pneumatic otoscope okay and sometimes by seagulls pneumatic speculum also next important test is the stretching tube function test the usually when the tube moves on sigillation or on pneumatic speculum then you at least know that there is some form of stretching tube function so tympanic orifice of stretching tube is seen when there is tm perforation at this you can see the tube either tympanic orifice is blocked or not or it's normal then nasopharyngeal orifice of stretching tube is seen in posterior endoscopy but it is usually difficult uh, to see you can see by the endoscope which is not carried out in routine clinical practice In the function of stretching tube is tested by pulsatory maneuver. You can see this pulsatory maneuver when the patient just closes the nostrils and mouth and tries to tries to breathe out. Then at least you can see the bulging of tympanic membrane or twin bis maneuver which shows retraction of tympanic membrane. Uh, as you know, the significance of stretching tube is important because they are important for outcome of tympanoplasty procedures. So when there is TM uh, dysfunction, then the result of tympanoplasty might not be very good. So it is dysfunction also can lead to AME, AOM, or chronic arthritis media. Uh, then you have to go for examination of facial nerve, which is usually con uh, conducted at last, performed at last. The facial nerve has both sensory and the motor function, but motor function is more more significant than sensory function. 
the sensation at the posterior AC canal has to be uh, palpated. <coughs> then motor function by peripheral for peripheral branches like frowning, forceful closure of the eyes. You can see the crease of the forehead and give the eyes close against the resistance. Then grimacing, mouth blowing, or clenching of the teeth all, all can be performed to see the peripheral branches function. So if the patient with facial palsy is given in the exam, then available topodiagnostic tests also need to be carried out. Basically, the clinical test topodiagnostic tests also they have to be carried out. Thank you so much. Have a good day and do well in the practicals. Thank you.